So this tiller here hasn't been used in my landscape in over five years. I consider that a success. But I still just want to touch base on some of the ideology behind tilling the soil, the soil food web, and just creating a very sustainable ecosystem on a property. So when I first started this project over five and a half years ago, this whole property looked as if it was just a big lawn. But upon closer inspection, what I found is it was hiding quite a bit of debris on the surface and buried under the soil. I actually ordered a dumpster, had it delivered here to help me take care of it. I removed thousands of pounds of urbanite, some of which was buried a couple feet down into the ground. I took out glass bottles, clothing, uh, old fencing. I found golf clubs, you name it. It was pretty much scattered and strewn all around in this property. And, you know, to be honest with you, I really felt at that moment like I was meant to be here because I was healing something. I was beginning the process of rejuvenation. And the tiller at that point, the rototiller, was instrumental in that process. So I'm just wanting to share with you guys my experiences. I'm not trying to impose my views, but rather just let you know exactly how it is I've gotten to this point. And as you watch, as things proceed, uh, you'll have a full understanding of exactly what occurred here. So as I walk around now, you can see fungi popping up all over the place. We've got nitrogen fixers like fava bean coming up. We've got biodynamic accumulators like comfrey with a deep tap root that's pulling up some of those nutrients uh, that aren't available to some of the other plants and allowing me to harvest and then spread that atop the surface around other plants. So what's really happening at this point is something called connectivity in the soil food web. There is a balance occurring now. The soil food web is a host of different living organisms that are actually helping to create the best soil structure, the best conducive environment for growing plants and for a thriving, healthy environment. They include things like fungi, uh, mycorrhiza, which has been referred to as like the internet of the soil. I think that's just a wonderful explanation as it spreads for miles and miles underneath the ground, connecting all these plants to each other. There's also arthropods and nematodes and some things we can't see, uh, microscopic level bacteria and such, and some things we can see like worms and birds. Even chickens are part of this living soil web occurring here. They're helping to break down organic material, turn it into manure, and contribute to the health of the soil. As you can see, there's plenty of wood chips on the ground. I brought in over 30 loads, many of which were over 25 yards, back to this area, and I've been building the soil. And now, as I move forward, I'm starting to shift things over to more of a living mulch because things have rejuvenated to that point now. I'm gonna keep bringing in the wood chips, but I want more living mulches to take the place of a lot of this wood chip that's strewn about back here. So after I tilled the ground here, and trust me, that's a hard thing for me to do, knowing about the living soil web, but I knew in my case it had to be done. I'm not a purist, I'm not a perfectionist, and I just do what I need to do intuitively and that works for me. So after I had got everything tilled up and cleaned up and literally filled a dumpster over halfway, one of those large commercial dumpsters with debris, I then went around and I laid cardboard down over the entire ground and then put wood chips on top of that. So that's a form of lasagna gardening. And if you're not familiar with it, look into it. I think it's a great way to go. And if you're fortunate enough to start gardening on a piece of property that's already clean and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, all the debris and stuff like I did, you could go straight to lasagna gardening as a means to not disturb the soil food web, smother out weeds and grass that you want to take out, 
and that will go back into the soil and feed the soil. So to just quickly recap, when I arrived at this property, it was in very rough shape. I went ahead and cleaned all the debris from the property with the help and aid of a rototiller. I then laid down cardboard and put wood chips on top of that. That was to not only protect and act as a skin covering for that now exposed earth, but to also smother out any remaining grass and weeds that were there. From there, I kept on bringing in more loads of wood chips, and I still do to this day, over 30 loads thus far. And I'm focused on continually building the soil and the soil food web. You know, this environment needs all of us to take care of it one yard at a time. And there's going to be different strokes for different folks and different solutions for different situations. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention that I want more people to get tuned into, and that's microremediation, which is a form of bioremediation. And what that is is using fungi to actually sequester and even degrade contaminants that can be found in an environment, in a soil. Uh, we are moving towards a place in history where we can now start healing and mending the planet with the knowledge that we have. So really, I just want everyone to stay encouraged and realize there's a lot of hope and we're moving in a good direction in many ways.